Greetings, welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ico. My co-host is always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. So, Chris, San Diego Comic-Con 2019. We got some pretty big news out of this. Yeah. Actually, more than I was expecting from, uh, from Comic-Con. I thought we'd see a lot of big releases at the uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, pretty worried that uh, this Picard series was not going to be... Very good. <laughs> I had feelings it was going to be very Discovery-like. This uh, trailer is what I was looking forward to, and it has cleared up a lot of my scared, confused feelings. Yeah, I think a lot of that has been allayed. Um, there were no dune buggies. There weren't, but you know, I felt a hole. <laughs> <laughs> a dune buggy-shaped hole yes. in that trailer. I did. So exciting. That yeah. trailer was awesome. Go watch the trailer. Yeah, that, was, not seen uh, it. The, that got me a lot more hyped for uh, for this show than I was expecting it to. Yeah, I was yeah let's get into it. So happy. <laughs> so happy. Uh, so yeah, we start out with Retired Admiral. We already kind of knew that. Uh, yeah. The vineyards at uh, La Barrière en France. Uh, Picard's dog name? Number one. I was just kidding about that. I, I didn't. I didn't think that would be the dog's name. Yeah. But they've done it. The absolute. It's absolute like, mad lad. It's like even just a little bit in this has been a lot. Seeing that com badge was amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, TNG com badge. I missed you. There was a little bit of talk that um, the admiral he was talking to might be uh, um, Philippa. Yeah. From um, uh, from Data's court episode. Uh, the measure of a man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know how. I don't know if every scene is just going to be a little Easter egg like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Or what? You know, it's entirely possible. It's just some random admiral, but yeah, yeah we'll see how it goes. Admiral, I have encountered a woman. She came to me for help. If she is who I think she is, she's in serious danger. Uh, we got V four in a cabinet. I'm assuming it's V four. Yeah. Probably. Too much vaporized uh, data, so. Yeah, I, I don't think Data's body survived that. Um, they're later having a little poker game he doesn't want to end. Now, yeah. that could be on a holodeck. Yeah, some people are saying uh, that might be on a holodeck. Uh, first of all, yeah, we have Brent Spiner in this as Data in some capacity. That was the one of the holy shit moments from the trailer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some they've you know done a lot of CGI on his face because obviously it, it's hard to twenty years later come back and play in a, a mortal ageless what? android. I thought his cheeks <laughs> looked a little fuller. Yeah, um, yeah, he was pretty and Brent, round. Brent Spiner's not that round even yeah. now. Like yeah, so, so that's I thought interesting. Was, thought that was kind of weird. Uh, some people are saying this might be on a holodeck, maybe because um, we know Data's uploaded his consciousness into B four. Um, in the comics, then Data's completely reasserted himself in that body. Uh, so we don't know how they're going to do that. Um, some people are saying, yeah, this might just be a holodeck Data, but it might actually have his consciousness, because that Data does exist somewhere. Yeah. Uh, this might be B4's body, um, totally reasserted. This might be uh, B4, but because it's sort of inferior tech, uh, data can only you know come out for 15 or 20 minutes, or he overloads the thing. You know, you know this could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't think he's part of the main cast. No, I don't think so. So I think we're just gonna get some like Easter eggs of him in there once in a while. Mm -hmm. I don't want the game to end. I can see that, Captain. We get uh, Issa Bruins, a uh, former Borg turned human, and uh, she's being chased by Romulans. Is that like confirmed for her? I mean, that was sort of my suspicion from the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, that's confirmed? Yeah. Okay. That's, All right. what, that's what she said she was. All right. Okay. Um, she feels safe with Picard because he was low cutest. Yeah. All these former Borgs feel better with Picard. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Uh, so it looks like the Romulans have somehow commandeered a Borg ship. A blue one. Yeah. Possibly, you know, destroyed and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they're experimenting on Borg tech. They have a yep. little prison camp where they haven't had any assimilations in 5,843 days. And that is almost exactly 16 years. So I wonder yeah. if that's going to be something that gets mentioned. Yeah, that'd be, yeah. Uh, be interesting. Yeah. Um, also, one of the Borgs they're experimenting on is apparently Hugh, mm -hmm. which is Lots pretty sweet that he's coming yeah. back. Yeah. Identify yourself. Hugh. Identify yourself. We are Hugh. 
This is not a Borg identification. Jonathan Del Arco. Um, and I say there's going to be a Borg redesign because he had to get a whole face mold done mm -hmm. where they used to just paint his face. Yeah, uh, I think we did, we discussed this when we were worried they were bringing the Borg into Discovery, but like I'm totally down to see a modern uh, sort of reimagining of the look for the Borg. You know, I don't think we're going to be getting, you know, these plastic tubes just sort of super glued into people's shoulders anymore. Well, I mean, we're talking four, year, four years after Nemesis, so they can't be that much different. More than four years after Nemesis. Um, there hasn't been any assimilations in 16 years, so yeah. I imagine this is a Borg ship that hasn't changed much in the last 16 years, so that's really easily the only four years since Nemesis. Well, I think we're, we're going to get a, like, a little visual update on yeah. the Borg, and I I, I'm down with visual updates, so long as they're not complete visual redesigns, blah, Klingons. Uh, but yeah, you know, mod modern up my board a little, you know, we show did, me some cool stuff. We did see like 20 ships flying towards like a desert planet, and I have a bad feeling those were supposed to be like Romulan ships, but they just look like boxes with wings on them. More like the TOS kind of Romulan yeah. ship, right? Yeah, uh, we did, um, we saw like an interesting type of bird of prey or whatever inside the uh, Borg ship, mm -hmm. um, and then there were a couple outside that looked a lot more TNG-like. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, Brent told a little story about uh, how he heard the Picard series uh, was happening, so he called the producers to ask if they had anybody in mind for the role of Picard, <laughs> and then said they hung up on him. That is a very Brent Spiner thing to do, I think. Yeah, it got Stuart laughing pretty good. <laughs> uh, they still got three episodes. He does a fantastic Patrick Stewart impression. He does. I think he oh, could have done it. He could have called them up and I done actually, that. I want to see that. Like, there's, um, there's a version of the first episode of Archer where they've replaced Archer with a raptor, like a velociraptor, and I want to see that for this show. I, I want to see the first episode, but with Brent Spiner doing his uh, Patrick Stewart <laughs> impression. That'd be nice. What the hell are you doing out here, Picard? Saving the galaxy? We're at uh, Chateau Picard. Picard's pouring himself some whiskey. Mm -hmm. Tough day, I'm guessing. Yeah. And he's talking he's to something a little hard. He's talking to Seven of Nine. Holy shit! You that know, was that was um, one of the bigger holy shit moments for me because that wasn't, I think, on anyone's radar. Yeah. Uh, before Comic Con, they'd completely kept the lid on that. Well, I mean, we didn't know anything about Borg, so yeah. Now that the Borg are involved, it makes complete sense for her to be there. Yeah, I imagine she's probably the Federation's expert. <laughs> I wonder, like, Issa, if she's drawn to Picard because of his little cutest. <laughs> no, but she was also, um, she was very human, you know, she was very upbeat, she was very expressive, so I think she is completely taken. Hair was down. Hair was down. No cat suit for you, though, Chris. Eh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she seems to have, like, completely uh, taken to her humanity, and I'm really interested in, um, you know, seeing what Jerry Ryan gets to do. I wonder if she'll still go uh, by Seven or if she'll go by Annika. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Um, but when Jerry Ryan actually got some things to do on Voyager and she got some real acting, you know, she had real good performances. Do you mean um, like making out with Chakotay and practicing that? No, I mean the, the, op the opposite of that. Oh. Or the opposite of that. Uh, but yeah, now that she gets to be more expressive and more human, you know, I, I want to see uh, what she can do. I think, we'll get, a, I think so. we'll get a little bit of like, you know, more emotion, but like a little bit of Spock jokes, like how Spock always has like a joke to make. Mm -hmm. um, I think Seven will be able to point out the logicalness of jokes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do things look that different? Oh no. In fact, it's amazing how little it has changed. Everything is exactly as I remember it. The house, hills. Have you ever been a stranger to yourself? Many, many times. It's a really nice house that they're in. Yeah, um, that's yeah. definitely well, the old not his one, brothers. The old one burnt down. Yeah, but it, it also looks one like of the it's older. Worst decisions made regarding Picard. Yeah. Just off-screen, off-hand, kill his family. <laughs> God! <laughs> Ugh. You wanted to see it, didn't you, you sick bastard? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that is exactly what I'm upset about. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. You got, you got it. Yeah. I know who you are. Then you have the advantage. You're my nephew, Jean-Luc, from the Starship Enterprise. Then you must be my uncle, René. I'm not your uncle. It's the other way around. Yeah, so Picard's talking to like some Romulan or Falcon and he's telling him like, oh, like you need to 
you need to be the captain everybody knows you are. Mm -hmm. I felt like that guy's acting was from a fan film. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to see like a, another Vulcan dude with a sword and he's gonna follow Picard around. And he just, his makeup looks kind of fake. <laughs> <laughs> looks like low production value. I don't know. Uh, it bothered me. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I like that he has a sword though, so mm -hmm. he might win me over. Um, that is no TNG bridge. No, no, definitely they got looks a like a, kind of a cargo ship, maybe. Yeah, they got some old, some old ship yeah. there. I when I saw that, I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. Like it makes sense. We're getting a Picard that's doing his own thing, yeah. and he's getting the ship to get somewhere, and he's putting together this ragtag crew, but. I really do need the Enterprise at some point. <laughs> well, I think you and I were discussing. I, I don't think we're getting the Enterprise. I think we're we're going to get a different ship. Well, at the end, just show me. Like, here's the Enterprise. Yeah. Picard, could you break the champagne on it? Because we got a new captain and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, with uh, Riker and Troy coming back to yeah. also yeah, guest we have, spot on here. Yeah, I think those were our last two confirms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that means that the Titan's going to come pick them up. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to see the USS Titan. With, now, uh, will they yeah. go with the Titan that was designed by fans, that was approved by everybody, that's in the video games, that's on the novel pictures? Like, because that's a sweet ship. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. That's what I crave. <laughs> uh, Picard says engage. At the end, he's having the Earl Grey tea when he's playing uh, playing cards with Data. Yeah. And Data, if you like look, and it's really just tiny little details here, but he looks like he's wearing the Nemesis uniform because you can see like the gray and the little yellow stripes on his neck. Yeah. Um, so I think that's some of the reasons people were thinking holodeck, or yeah, yeah, who knows? But we'll see how we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, um, the writers were saying like uh, Picard like will critique a story um, when he gets a script. And uh, then he knows the character better, so they just trust him on things. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that Patrick Stewart is probably the authority on, on Captain Picard. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I worry that you have forgotten who you are. We do not. You can't do it alone. Uh, they still have three episodes to shoot. Um, it is getting pushed to 2020. And then, yeah, not entirely unexpected. Yeah. I think uh, late 2019 was pretty aggressive. Uh, pretty aggressive timeline. Yeah. Well, they're saying um, it sounds like even for Discovery and pretty much all the Star Trek because they want to be like movie quality special effects that it takes them eight months to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's going to take a while. Um, before we move on to yet another Star Trek, mm -hmm. what are your final thoughts on this Picard series? What do you uh, think is going to happen? Things like that? That's what my initial series. thoughts. <laughs> uh, wow, yeah. So this trailer got me a lot more excited uh, than I thought I would be. Um, you know, we didn't see, you know, just action hero dune buggy Picard running around. Um, there's more talking. There's more... Um, you know they're they are digging pretty hard into like references and nostalgia, um, but I'm completely okay with that. I am a okay with this, um, and it looks like they're going to be telling a pretty cool story post Nemesis. Um, you know what's going on with the Borg, what's going on with the Romulans, what's going on with Captain Picard, and these are all things uh, that I'm pretty excited to learn about. And it looks like they're going to be delivering in a, a pretty true to form way. Yeah, for me, I think. Um... I think it's all just going to be like a journey for him. They said it's going to start out a bit darker, like he's a little bit lost, mm -hmm. um, and this chick's going to come into his life and pretty much send him on this adventure, and this adventure is going to introduce us the guest stars we've craved. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guarantee you, if we're getting Riker, Troy, Data, we're getting Beverly at some point. We might even, yeah, get, I, we might I, even get a Wesley. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I want more information on Beverly and Picard's story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, we're also, um, we'll get to the Star Trek short soon, but there is going to be a Picard Star Trek short as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me though, like this entire series hinges on like one simple thing. Like, yeah, I want to, to see Riker. I want to see the Titan. I'd love to see an Enterprise. But if I don't get to see Picard naked under four lights, I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> How many lights do you see there? I see four lights. No, there are five. You're quite sure? 
There are four lights. So Chris, we got some Star Trek shorts coming. We do. You know, I'm not sure I ever really looked forward to Star Trek shorts before, but I'm looking forward to them now. I think I should buy some Star Trek shorts. Yeah, I, I've got some cool ones. They've got the Command one, it's red. Oh, I almost okay. got some for Vegas. Neat. Um, there's going to be six. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, one's going to be a Picard backstory one. Mm -hmm. uh, one's clearly going to be Pike, Spock, number one, on the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah they mentioned that. I'm very excited. Well, they, they, got, they bought this set. They showed they us a little it. trailer for it. Yeah. You saw it, right? Yeah. Jeez. Um, <laughs> they also asked the crowd at San Diego Comic-Con like, if they want to see a Picard series, or a Pike series, and this is like... No yeah. shit! Yeah. So they're going to look into it, they said. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's six. They're titled Ask Not, q and A. I I wonder if that means Q. Mm -hmm. um, Trouble with Edward, whoever that is. No. Uh, the girl who made the stars. That sounds like something I'm not interested in. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about Tilly, probably. Yeah. Um, Ephium and Dot. Mm -hmm. And Children of Mars. That mm -hmm. sounds like a horror movie, like Ghosts of Mars. I wonder if that's going to be a real prequel one. Because I, I guess we're saying that... Um... Zora and whatever so far has been just completely irrelevant. That's had nothing to do with anything. So maybe some of these are just stories in the Star Trek universe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, like the Picard one would be cool. The Pike one would be cool. Um, there's probably going to be a couple that are um, related, but there probably be some that aren't. Yeah. And I think the thing that I'm accepting about these short tracks more is they're going to help hold us over. Yeah. And give us, yeah, also, give us something to talk about. Well, so this, this time we're getting uh, six weeks of them, it looks like. It was just four last year, so yeah. that's a bonus. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah. Well, that's it for the short tracks. Any final thoughts on short tracks? <laughs> the monastery is considered the most sacred site in the Klingon Empire. Uh, let's move on to Disco. Yeah. Thousand year time jump. Yeah. They're not coming back. So I really don't know how uh, they're going to do the Section 31 show, unless they're going to start up a Section 31 a thousand years in the future, which makes no sense. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just hoping that they can, you know, settle their behind the scenes down and they don't change showrunners again. Um, there are there are still lots of I good. Think they did already. <laughs> there are still lots of good part, but like halfway through. Yeah. You know what I mean, like. Okay. Um, I, I want to see a season that's actually just one person's vision from start to finish, please. Yeah. Because there are lots of good pieces in Discovery, but it's it, it's been sort of a jumble. There's been it's just been rushed and cut in weird places, and you know, it's been well, strange. they said they're uh, they're adding a ton of new characters. Mm -hmm. um, they've got like a little shot scene with uh, David Aja. He's going to play Cleveland Booker. Mm -hmm. um, He's a pretty good actor. I've seen him in a few things, and most of the things I see him in, he's just kind of like better than everybody else that's on that show. He's just like a guest star pops in, like, yeah, I'm pretty cool. You're gonna like me, mm -hmm. but I'm leaving soon. <laughs> so, so enjoy. Um, I just I feel like this season's gonna take another step towards just being a better show, being a better Star Trek. Yeah, I feel like. It started so low, <laughs> well, it's, and it's, season two is just like, we've got it. We've got the potential. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be really good for them to get out from under the thumb of, you know, we have to end up here. Yeah. You know, we can't do this because somebody did that and you know, they, they've got more freedom here um, but I'm sure you and I will find something to yell about oh yeah like guys that love to argue canon about Star Trek Discovery don't don't you guys worry because <laughs> the ship is still gonna be from the 23rd century yeah and it's gonna be able to do better things than the ships in the, the 25th yeah compare it to what Picard can pull off in his show <laughs> yeah 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 uh, they're still not saying who's going to be captain. They're just teasing that right now. Um, don't bore me and make it Saru. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if he's got an aggressive I like I now. like the rotating uh, captain's chair. It's like the defense against the dark arts seat. Yeah. Who's going to be captain this season? Yeah, there's just some guy. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're going to they're gonna start out in different places. 
I don't know, that's just Burnham starting out in somewhere else and the ship starting somewhere else, but they'll have to put the band back together. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to have to figure out who they are in this time yep. and uh, see how the Federation's doing. I imagine it's going to be chaotic. I'm Yeah, I'm still thinking... The, the, the pessimist in me is is still thinking this is grim dark federation and then Michael Burnham has to save the federation <laughs> yeah yeah it will happen yeah. you know I feel like this is gonna be like Andromeda now it's gonna be like all the ships now aren't as good as they used to be okay. so the discovery is gonna be like so the Andromeda which is way more better than all the other ships that yeah. are coming out now and the crew's gonna be like oh we gotta restore the federation just like Kevin Sorbo had to restore the Commonwealth. Which was also a Gene Roddenberry thing. It was. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, if you just put a little more production value into a drama, it could have been a great show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm betting they've never seen anything like this before. Fire! Firing. Anything you're looking forward to on Disco before we move on? Uh, we just don't have a lot of information right now. No. Um, I guess, yeah, what I'm looking forward to is, like I already said, I'd like to see just one person's vision all the way through. I'd like this to be a little more cohesive, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, um, you know, when they're not smushed in the middle of all this competing canon. Yeah, I'm looking to see if uh, Booker just, uh, just kills Burnham right off the bat. <laughs> just like, you want to be my hero? There's a way. <laughs> Now for the Star Trek series that I'm actually looking forward to. I mean, Picard, yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, still a risk, though. Still a risk. This, not a risk to me. I no. feel this is 100% guaranteed I'm going to love. Okay. Lower Decks. Yeah. Animated series. Uh, takes place 2380 after Nemesis. Um, I already like the uniforms. Mm -hmm. They're a nice little a nice little callback. A little, little change. 30-minute episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to follow four ensigns. Um, Ensign Tendi, who, uh, you know... Works in Med Bay, yeah, and she's very excitable. Mm -hmm. um, Anson Mariner, uh, who's played by Tony Neeson, uh, she's also going to go host a Star Trek podcast, an official Star Trek podcast. So ignore all the other podcasts out there, guys. <laughs> but this I like one my can get the guests, even right. though a few of those guests, I think Flocks is like literally doing a podcast as well. There's a couple of Star Trek actors that are doing podcasts. I know um, uh, Garrett Wang. Yeah. It's doing one. Well. Yeah. Another Theresian has returned. Welcome. You're home now, Harry. Uh, wait a minute. I still don't understand how this is possible. Brad Plummer's going to be played by Jack Quaid, another guy. Um, then they're going to have four main character crews that you kind of expect, like uh, Captain Friedman, Lieutenant Shax, Commander Ranson, who's actually played by Jerry O'Connell, who's mm -hmm. married to Rebecca Romaine, who is, you know, number, number one. one. Um, and Dr. Tana, who's going to be a cat person, mm -hmm. Castillon race. Mm -hmm. She looks like Grumpy Cat, though, and she has no tail. <laughs> so something happened to her. We'll find out what. Uh -oh. She has a tragic backstory. But, yeah, um, it's, uh, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, there is so much room to deal with this. Uh, so this is also a, a post-nemesis series. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's comedy uh, primarily, but I'm still hoping... Like, if this is, is going to be canon, I'm hoping they don't do anything too ridiculous. Well, uh, Mike McMahon, who is the creator of Rick and Morty there, um, mm -hmm. loves TNG and says that they're not going to be poking fun at TNG, yeah. that it's actually just going to be the characters that are funny and they're going to be dealing with real problems. Mm -hmm. he says he loves the B stories. He says, like, yeah, Riker being down on a planet, you know, needing rescue, that's cool. But when Data and Jordy are putting a play together, that's what I'm into. <laughs> Computer. In the Holmesian style, create a mystery to confound Data with an opponent who has the ability to defeat him. Define parameters of program. Yeah, yeah, it's just sort of the um, the behind-the-scenes everyday life of the future yeah. and of comedy from that. I'm really wondering how this is going to compare to Orville, which is, you know, sort of already doing that. And yeah, but... Uh... Yeah, I think it'll be similar. I think also similar paths. I mean, here's a guy that made an animated comedy series, mm -hmm. um, and now he's getting into Star Trek. And yep. if, if you watch the the panel, he just loves it and goes on and on about how like he's has so many Star Trek stories that he's wanted to tell, and it's just like I can do it. Animation <laughs> is cheaper. <laughs> Man, it, you know, if Seth MacFarlane waited a few years, I wonder if he would have gotten this gig. Yeah, maybe it's possible. 
Because I think he, that would probably be the first person you'd ask, hey, I'm making an animated comedy Star Trek show. Yeah. Well, we even got news on the Orwell. So, what, does this just go on until somebody... Ah! Ah! Let's go! It's looking like uh, late 2020. Mm -hmm. um, watch it get pushed back even further. Anything that says late that year is usually the year after. <laughs> but they're also switching to Hulu um, because uh, they're taking so long with their special effects because Seth is like really trying to step it up to another level, which it already looks great. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, so it's it's taking longer to film, and so Fox can't really schedule them in there and be like, you know, this is our show that repeats every year at this time. So also Fox uh, being sold to Disney is a factor in that. And then five years from now, Disney will own Hulu because <laughs> they already have a deal in place to have it in less than five years. <laughs> so, well, you know, Disney's going to have everything, but it looks like Orville's going to live on. That's probably why it took so long for them to announce the season three, because they're trying to work out the details. Yeah. But I'm sure we'll get more details on that. Looking forward to it, though. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, that's all the news I got for you. Any final thoughts on all the finals? Well, it was a very, very eventful Comic-Con. Um, more than more than I thought it would be. Um, I think we've heard a lot of good news for Star Trek out of this. I don't think there's anything I can point to and say, you know, that's giving me pause or anything. That is... Well, the other series on Nickelodeon, so it's definitely going to be more kid-friendly. Yeah. That's fine. I think I've said before, that might be the, the closest we get to, like, pure old-school Star Trek. Just because it's going to be a lot of, you know, morality plays. <laughs> just, like, sort of kid-focused stuff might be, might be the closest we get. But yeah, all, all the information that we've learned from this has uh, got me excited. You know, I'm really looking forward to the Star Trek we're going to be getting this year. Yeah, they were even saying at the, the Lower Decks panel, like, you know, some people might just get into this because of the comedy, mm -hmm. and that might get them into Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So, you know, be like, hey, there's some live action stuff out there, too. Yeah. Might go watch that. So, the fact that Star Trek is starting to finally become this big encompassing thing, like mm -hmm. Star Wars is doing, yeah. like, it's getting pretty excited. Mm -hmm. A bull. Words. They're fun. <laughs> well, as always, thanks for watching.